We're back for the two o'clock block on a given Wednesday, the day before July 4th, Independence Day. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and the handsome fellow at my left is Roger Epstein. Hi, Roger. Hi, Jay. Nice right. to see so you. So nice to see Happy you. Happy day before July 4th. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, July 4th, too. The, uh, I, I don't know what to deal with that. I mean, how, how to deal with that. But with July 4th? Yeah, it's special this year. It's, yeah. Uh, it, you have to wrap your mind around it this year. It's harder to think patriotically this year. Anyway. Go so, to the beach and watch the fireworks in Kailua. Yeah. You'll be happy you did. Drink beer. Drink beer. <laughs> so, we're, we're, you know, we're <clears throat> really talking about the same thing, I think, when we talk about tax today, because our, our mission today is uh, uh, the Tax Reform Act of 2017, two years later. Yeah. Uh, otherwise known as, has the Tax Reform Act done what was promised two years ago? Wow. You've been looking into that. I know we talked about it a couple of times. We've had a couple of conversations about this, Jay, and now it's two years later. And uh, do you know this is the biggest tax reform bill since 1986? This, here's, here's a book. Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the complete bill. This is what the bill looks like. So huge amount of changes in the tax law. Uh, some of them very small. Uh, but mostly designed to uh, help the, uh, uh, the owners of businesses versus the workers. I would say that's the most significant thing I take away from the idea, and you would expect that from Republicans, the idea that the people that create the jobs are much more important than the people that do the work, and therefore the top-down mentality. Top the trickle That's down. That's what got us. The trickle that got us into the depression back in the '30s. That same kind of mentality. Oh, absolutely. And this is going to get us into the next depression unless we make some changes. I, it's hard for me to imagine it cannot generate a, a, a next uh, depression. Well, you know, my 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 boiling down of it, or my recollection of our, our discussion anyway, was that the the it's, say hello a, it's for me. God. <laughs> God's he wants calling. to join the conversation. Gosh, I'm I sure don't he know. Has I apologize. Thoughts. I apologize. Back, well, back back uh, it happens. Back, yeah. back um, you know back a couple of years ago, um, my recollection is that the Tax Reform Act uh, benefits were were buying off the public. They were a way to mm, kind of buy off the public, uh, so the public would go along with the program, thinking they were going to have real benefits. But in fact. The real benefits were illusory and temporary. Yes. The corporate benefits were bigger and they were permanent. And, and I don't think the public realized that. They were after a quick buck and they let it go and they let the, the statute pass without any significant op opposition. Furthermore, something happened in Congress that Congress passed this without a single committee hearing. This huge, big book of a statute without a single committee hearing. You know, what's wrong with that recipe? Yeah. Well, what's wrong with it is now you end up, there's a lot of technical problems with the bill, particularly in the foreign area, which is extremely complicated. Uh, <clears throat> you talked about uh, uh, the individuals. I don't think they needed anybody to, to support this because they control both houses and they had a Republican president. And they squeezed it through before the end of that year. Yeah. So that, um, you know, they, they had control of both houses. It was easy to do. Right. And if they hadn't done it then, look what happened in, in uh, uh, the subsequent year. You, mm -hmm. you know, they, they lost control of the second house. Yeah. So uh, uh, I think uh, when you look at the overall bill, you see that uh, it ag exacerbates the, the gap between the rich and the poor. And there doesn't seem to be any concern about that in the Republican group. Uh, you know, when George Bush was president, uh, they started talking about how wide that gap had gotten. And it's, it's spread in the last 40 years. And so uh, he said, well, that's because so many more people got rich. But that's not really true. Mm. The truth is we're losing if we haven't lost the middle class because you can't make enough money to buy into the capital market. The relative value of labor and capital has gotten so skewed that if you don't start with capital, you can't accumulate enough just by working to get in. And you see it here where the average house is $800,000 and you jump out, you come out of college even making $25,000, $30,000 a year. You have no hope of saving 120% for a down it's payment. A perfect unless, example. Yeah. 
And it wasn't always that way. Uh, uh, when you were a kid, I, I wasn't born yet, of course, but when you were a kid, uh, you, could, you could buy a house. If you came out of college, you could buy a house for one to one and a half to two times your annual salary. So imagine you come out now, you're making 30000 You could buy a house for forty-five dollars to $60,000. You could buy a starter house. So that's gotten way out of hand. College and expenses. College, uh, w when I went to college, I paid $100 a semester. Today, that same college is $10,000 a semester. Yeah. So uh, there, uh, that recognition is reflected in this, or the lack of recognition, or the lack of concern is reflected in this tax bill. And what it really says is, uh, we're going to favor the owners of businesses, and we're going to give them as much tax breaks as we can so that they'll have more money to stimulate the economy, to make the economy grow by investing that capital. But it's also that they are the ones who contribute to the Republican Party and they contribute to uh, Donald Trump's campaigns and the like. It's like the uh, July 4th thing tomorrow. Yeah. You know, he's giving away free tickets to uh, tons of Republicans. Right. I, I didn't get any free tickets. Have you got any free tickets? Well, I'm a Republican. Oh, okay. Well, you didn't get a free ticket either. Yeah, I got a You're free ticket. You're not enough of a Republican. I'm not enough of yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I really feel uh, that we're in an era where, uh, yes, the businesses are so dominant over the government that things uh, have to change or... Uh, we'll, you know, we'll move into something, something else, you know. Uh, uh, you mean another form of government? A form of government or a revolution or something. They talk about, you know, the, the uh, uh, right-wing revolutionists. But people can't put up with this forever. 50 to 70 percent of the population in Hawaii is living paycheck to paycheck. It's, it's crazy. And, and, and they're giving huge... One point, you know, this bill was supposed to be $1.5 trillion of debt. It's now estimated at $1.9 trillion of well, debt. Well, that's the part I couldn't understand. I mean, we needed to take on additional debt for what? No. Uh, there was no good reason. I mean, you can talk about filtered down. I never thought that was much, um, I mean, much of a, an argument as it wasn't in the 30s. Uh, but, but, you know, what's happened is we haven't been able to pay the bills. It was a week after the Congress passed this cockamamie bill, Tax Reform Act, yeah. um, that uh, Paul Ryan, then the Speaker of the, what was he, Speaker of the House in the Republican House, yeah. um, announced that there wasn't enough money to, to carry on with Social Security, Medicaid, and all that. And uh, my goodness, or, or to maintain the social safety net. So on the one hand, you know, they were giving away the money largely to corporations. Uh, and on the other hand, they were claiming they didn't have enough money to run the government, run the social safety net. Yeah. This, is, this is really bad planning. And this leads to all kinds of dissatisfaction at every level. I mean, we know that the, the public, the, I should say the electorate, because that's a hard word these days. But, you know, the, the, the public in this country is different than it was. It's not all white. It's not all capitalists. Yeah. It's everybody. It's diverse more than ever imaginable right now. And people are learning what you're talking about. They're unhappy with it. And so, you know, this was asking for trouble to do this. Well, you know, Jay, uh, uh, this bill violates every fundamental rule of economics. There was eight year run up to this of improving economy. You don't pass a bill to stimulate economy when the economy's uh, improving. You overheat it with that. Uh, and, and, and not only that, with all the money going to the wealthy people, 83% of the tax savings in this bill went to 1%, the top 1% earners. That's crazy. Who control something like 45 to 50% of the wealth in the country the already. The rich get richer. And you know what? 60% went to the 0.1%. 0.1%, that's about 3 million people got 60 percent of this bill. For what? Big campaign contributions. Big campaign contributions. And so, uh, you know, you, you, uh, one of the things that I'm, I think is, is hopeful is that the Democrats did carry the House. And hopefully they'll be able to undo some of this because this is, this is going to come back to haunt us. This huge two, almost $2 trillion in additional debt. We only had, uh, I think, 10 
10 trillion or something. So we've, we've, we've added 20% to the future payments of, of our children, of the next people down the line. And we're spending, we're spending huge amounts of money. I mean, he was spending, what was it, 50, 60 billion dollars extra for the military. 180 a, billion he put on the oh, budget. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you have these, this war in Iran, it's gonna cost money, it's costing lives and money. Um, you have all these escapades that he's involved in, and it's all costing money. Um, at the same, and 2.5 million for uh, July 4th tomorrow uh, with tanks. Well, that's whatnot, cheaper than sending him to Mar-a-Lago for a weekend. Exactly, and, you know, and, and you know, security look, look, alone. Look, look, Jay, we know, we know where we are. The question is, where do we, where do we want to get to? Where, where do we need to be? What's going on with the United States as it, it goes down from the dominant player in the, in the world for at least since World War II, and maybe for longer than that, maybe since the beginning, so 100 years or so or more. Okay, now you've got Asia just booming because of China, because uh, China was a third world country when I first went there in 1982. Not that long ago. Not that long ago, and all of a sudden, They've got a middle class, a booming middle class. They took 800 million people out of poverty. And now, remember we used to talk about the dominoes, the domino effect of communism? Well, now it's come into capitalism in Vietnam. I had two inquiries within the last couple of years of billionaires in Vietnam wanting to do real estate development here. Billionaires in Vietnam. Remember the war that right. you and I somehow They're coming managed to not? invest in Hawaii, in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Pakistan. You go down the list. They're all growing now. The world has changed. The world is changing. And we're not keeping up. No, we, we. No, clearly, the Republican and the Trump concept is to go backwards, to keep what we got, bring coal back, pretend that this isn't happening. You know, who else in the world? Look at all the things that are going on in the world about climate change. And the United States, the biggest leader of the world, supposed to be leader, says, it's bullshit. We're not going to have it. And let's get out of the Paris Accord. At some point, people begin to laugh and, and not take aren't, us seriously. Aren't they now? And, and when you say, what's in it for me? My goal, Donald Trump says, what's in it for me, my country? How can you be the leader of a world? Would you, would you join a group where the head of the group says, I want to get everything I can and for you, myself? And you get nothing. You and have you to get fight nothing. for everything. And, and, and by the way, all these things we did for you before, we entered into agreements with you where we knew we were top dog, so you got a little bit of favoritism. Those suck. Now we're pissed because we got into them. They're breaking. Our leader tells you we, we were cheated because we decided to be magnanimous in some case because... I, I, the example I like, it's old now, but when I was in, in elementary school sometime, the teacher said, you know, in the United States, the average income is $3,200 a year. In Russia, it's $125. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's cool. That's good. But if you're in Russia, you were starving. <laughs> and so that, that was the rest of the world, too. So now we see the United States has matured. Uh, we, don't, we don't have the same kind of... Uh, uh, Infrastructure, we, we, you know, it's not as modern. You go to Shanghai or Beijing, you look at the subway systems and you go to New York City and, and we don't have the minerals. Look at that our have. airport right here. <laughs> so, so the main thing is, how do you deal with the future when you see the future is moving towards Asia? They've been talking about this for 30 years. Remember Bank of Hawaii changed its name to the Pacific Century Bank at one time? until they had the big crash there in 2000. <laughs> and they and, backed off that. And one. they backed off that. But the point is, people saw this coming. And it's not going to go away no matter what we do. So I'm looking at, we're having a trade war with China. What do we hope to accomplish? What is our end game here? To get, uh, get them to stop stealing our technology? That's why we're having a trade war? To, to hold them back? I, I mean, I don't understand what the goal is. Yeah. And I also don't understand... Who are our warriors in this battle? Is it Walmart and uh, General Motors? Are they our guys? I mean, <laughs> Nissan has as many plants in the United States uh, and probably as General Motors. You can't tell with these mega companies who's our guys and who's somebody else. So, 
Tax. Yeah. Tax. 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 Very important in all of this. It is. <clears throat> Tax is the single most you know, highly leveraged legislation you can do, really. Yes. Um, and, you know, what is interesting is that, oh, the other thing is that people don't understand tax. Right. You know, you may, but, you know, the middle class, no. No, I know, I know. File it's, the returns, there that's was it. A, there was a, a chairman of the Ways and Means Committee years ago who wanted to make the tax law simplified enough so the average lawyer could understand it. <laughs> True. And he never came close. <laughs> You have to specialize in this. And today, you have to specialize in small portions of the Internal Revenue Code to really know what's going on. You can't even be knowledgeable about income taxes, much less estate taxes. Right. And, so and nobody is going into the street with pitchforks on the regulations to Section 61. I'm yeah. just making that up. No, no, I hear no, you. And the people don't get excited about it. And it creeps up on them. And we did this year. We got the faith action community to testify uh, in favor of the tax on real estate investment trusts. Real estate investment trusts in Hawaii earn a billion dollars, pay no income tax. Yeah. And we got the law passed through the legislature. Yeah. Now the governor says he's going to veto it. Yeah. yeah because he did. the power, he didn't veto it. Did he veto it already? He said he was he on did. his I list. He, I well, okay. I think still he will. He will. There's no question about it. Well, maybe he's, maybe he's committed be to over. It. Anyway, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, it's really sad because there's a lot of ignorance operating there and, and a lot of, um, you know, political twists well, operating there. Yes. But the question I was going to put to you is this, this, what this really says to us is that tax has become an entirely political affair. Yeah. And in order to change it, I mean, a wonderful thought to go back and, and fix this, reverse parts of it, make it fair, make it, you know, make it, make, make it treat everybody fairly. Um, in, order to, in order to do that, you have to have both houses of Congress. It's white out. It's radioactive. It's political. Yeah. It's, the, the two houses of Congress in our lifetime, really questionable, Roger, that they're going to be able to get together and do this wonderful thing about making the tax, the tax code fair again. You, no, how no, do you no, no. do that? And that was 30, 40 years ago, the guy was talking about. Yeah. Well, the tax law has always been politicized. There are incentives in the law for various things, like home mortgages, like charitable contributions, uh, like oil and gas drilling, that, that encourage certain kinds of social actions and, and economic actions. It's the biggest incentive you but can now, find. Now, you see, we had this change when Reagan came in. He said, government is not the solution, it's the answer. Government is not the answer, it's the problem. Thank you for that. Yeah. So that's exactly what, what these people are reflecting. We don't want government. Of course, the government spending has increased under, under Trump. Even that's though the he remarkable cut the taxes. thing. So you lower the taxes and you, and increase, you increase the, the spending. spending. Yeah. What does that lead to? It leads to disaster and maybe the six bankruptcies that Trump had in the past when he <laughs> over leveraged himself. Let's have a national bankruptcy. <laughs> what happens if we can't pay our debts? First, our bonds go bad. Yeah. And our currency goes bad. Who knows what could happen? But we got $13 trillion worth of debt out there now, national debt. And if you can't pay it, there has to be some recourse or you start fighting about it. You know, it changes the world. Well, the world is changing. You're right. And, and so to me, you have to be sensible about it. Okay, I'll give you an example. So uh, uh, right now, you have a number of companies that are doing business worldwide, American companies. Okay, so they set up a company in Ireland, let's, let's just say, or UK, and they make a lot of money there. So let's say in Ireland, where the tax rates are low, uh, they pay maybe 5%, 10%, let's say, tax on their, on their income from there. So if they bring it back to the United States, now they got to pay, well, it's only 21% now, but it used to be 35%. So they don't want to bring it back. So, so the question is, what do you do about that? And, and this administration said, well, we want the money to come back. So we'll let it come back tax-free. And then at least we'll get the money. We won't get any tax, but at least we'll get the money. So if you're an international company and you're doing business outside the country, you don't have to pay American tax anymore. Now, another solution would be, hey, uh, uh, why don't we just tax it before they return it? What's, why should they be able to set up this little company here in Ireland and say, it's not my money? Of course it's your money. It's all the same company. Why not just tax it? And then they want to bring it back. They had to pay U.S. taxes anyway. We do that in certain circumstances. 
So you see how you have these choices and you go one direction or another. So uh, you change the way global business works. And you change, and this foreign tax, that's what they did. You don't have to pay, and it'll have huge, huge implications for tax shelters and the way people do business and all kinds of things. And for the United States, it's a huge loss of revenue. And so can we afford that? I don't think so. Well, we haven't, we haven't been able to do anything about infrastructure. Yeah. I mean, to name just one thing. Well, that'll, they'll take care of that. I think, I think they'll, the, the, something will be done with infrastructure. It'll have to be. It's on the Republican agenda. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I mean, so we don't have enough money for the social safety net, and we're abandoning the social safety and net. And so do you believe that we need a social safety net? Even Reagan said we needed a social safety net. But, well, but he, I believe it because I, I, mean, I want to see everybody happy. I don't want an unhappy country. You know what happens in unhappy countries? Revolution. You bet. You know, uh, 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 it depends on what you think government is for. So if you think government is just to have a police force and a, and a military, then you, and that everybody else should take care of themselves, then you don't need a social safety net. But my thinking has always been the government reflects the, the coalition of all the people who live in there. The government is supposed to be in charge and helpful to people having a, a, a good life. And so I think that's a whole different way of thinking. It is. And it's political. And it's the two ideological opposites that are happening right, right now. And, 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 and that's why I think it's difficult to find a common ground, because the philosophies are so different. And so it's going to be who is going to gain control. And right now, it's the Republicans. And one thing about Trump, he just keeps moving along. He doesn't, you know, he's got uh, thick skin. And he doesn't care what anybody says about anything. And, of course, he manipulates the, the, well, what really happened. And he puts headlines up there. Yeah. But behind his back, he's doing all these things oh, that we yeah. don't hear about. Oh, he's the absolute con man who, who's making you laugh while he's picking your pocket. Yeah, exactly. And especially the people that support so him. So what's your prediction for what's going to happen here? It isn't a pretty picture. I mean, you have, you have poor people, disadvantaged people, people who need a safety net. From a moral as well as a practical point of view, you know, the country has traditionally, at least in the last, what, 100 years, since World War I, it has tried to take care of them, try to offer them some, some consolation, some support. Now, if this continues, it will go away. There won't be any money for it. And, and there won't be any political will in a, in a divided Congress. Right. <clears throat> so right. what happens to the country? What happens, you know, how, how can we fix this, Roger? Is there a way to fix it? There this? is a way to fix it. The way to fix it is to vote for people who have a different concept. Now, the problem that the Democrats have had is they don't really have a plan. Bernie Sanders has a plan, and some of it is viable. Some, some of the new people that came into office, I think the answer is if 41% of the people like Trump, must mean that 59% of the people don't. And so find come up with some reasonable solutions. Don't run against Trump. Everybody knows what he's doing. Run against his policies. Run against his results. Uh, this bill is horrible. And, and there was a, 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 a report to the Democratic uh, uh, Committee talking about how terrible this is, and you've got to reverse things. We shouldn't have reduced taxes. We should have raised taxes to take care of things. And so... If you believe that, that it's government of the people, by the people, for the people, and that means it's supposed to take care of the people, not ignore them, then you have to put people in office. I think this is the way our country runs. If we keep going like this, we'll have an aristocracy of the rich. I don't know what, you know, we, we have a lot of it now. I mean, look at the people paying to get their kids into college. Sure. So, Perfect example. So, so money is so powerful. And Citizens so United dominant. makes it politically powerful. You know, why can't any state uh, uh, except Connecticut? Connecticut passed some laws allowing, uh, requiring the government to pay for their elections. That makes such good sense. And then you don't have somebody giving you $10,000 and then calling on the phone to ask you a favor. I mean, if I, you're, you're an elected officer and I give you 10000 and Haley gives you nothing, whose phone call are you going to return? 
That's what happens. I mean, you can't help it. It's 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 the way it is. Happens. But there's a corruption there. Is it I mean, it's, Jimmy it's Stewart corrupt. would never go along with this. No, but he's dead. So to heck. <laughs> you know, you know, you're absolutely right. Our fundamental concept is corrupt. Yeah. That money should control what goes on. But it's also hard to keep it out. Suppose there wasn't uh, money. What about paid advertisements? What about people just, you know, spending the money themselves to do it? They don't have to give it to, to a candidate. So I think you've got to recognize that the rich and the powerful are going to have more control than the poor increasingly, and the weak. Increasingly, Roger, it seems like Well, that's the question. The question is not should... Should you, should the guy who creates, the, goes out on a limb to create a business and you got a job, should he get more than you as an employee? Yes. How much is the thing? So 40 years ago, the CEO of a manufacturing company made 40 times more than the guy on the floor. Today, it's four or 500 times. That's what's There's happening. Something it's, wrong. It's the disparity. Big, <laughs> big error. And, but let me go to one thing, and, and that's, that's the children in the Immigration Service, <coughs> yeah. the Border Patrol, which is re being revealed as a pretty nasty outfit. Yeah. Uh, and, and the concept there is that these people have no papers, uh, they have no standing, um, and regardless of the fact that they're human beings in great need who haven't done anything wrong yeah. except seek sanctuary, um, the, the government is, is dumping on them and, and essentially starving them, asking them to drink out of toilets, um, and, and essentially killing them. A number have died and separating parents from children. I mean, all morally re reprehensible things. This, to me, is, is the canary in the coal mine. Well, you know, if you dump on the disadvantaged in that way, mm. the next step is you dump on the disadvantaged in other ways, other disadvantaged. People who are American citizens, yeah. people who just have a you know, raw deal, mm -hmm. uh, you make them drink out of the toilet, too. It's a question of treating each other. You know, the country, I think, was based on at least a fundamental notion of taking care of each other, being together in this deal. Yeah. Uh, and we've had exceptions to that, of course. Um, but I think we've lost that. And, oh, we've lost it. We've lost it. We're, well, remember that even before Trump, our, our, our Congress was dysfunctional for 20 years. Yeah. It, was, it was never... Uh, the way it was 30 or 40 years ago when uh, uh, people would talk to each other across the aisle. They would collaborate on bills. They would, it doesn't happen anymore. And I think what's going on in, uh, uh, at the immigration war is on purpose. Maybe not killing people, but, but they want to demonstrate to everybody in the world, don't come here. This is a demonstration. If you come to the United States, you're going to be treated like shit. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying, though, so, is that so this, is a, this is really um, a harbinger yeah. of treating people who are disadvantaged very poorly. And, and see, so the question is, is, is the system, we, we can't answer this at a time, but is the system going to correct itself so that we can deal with this uh, and return to a kind of a moral government? Um, not clear to me. Not clear to me, Roger. How yeah. you? Well, close by telling me how you feel about that. Well, I still feel like uh, uh, we're in a country that has uh, the ability to make a choice. And uh, uh, I, I don't see, uh, when you're in a dark period, it look, everything looks dark. Uh, I, I think that's where we are. I think things could well get better. I think there's a lot of sensible people. I think people care about this country. And I think you just have to begin to stand up and say what you believe. And if we can get those people elected, we can change the system. Uh, people have testified. We could turn this around in, in a minute. Yeah. We should raise taxes instead of lowering taxes. Yeah, we should. We, we should, should have estate taxes so that people can't create a, law, uh, a history of, of aristocracy of the rich. This is who, if you believe this is our country, then we still have the ability to do it. So I say... Let's keep having conversations like this where people see this is my option. And it's easy to trick people. It's hard to know. I mean, you get misinformation constantly. But if you keep plugging away, maybe we'll come out with the right answer. And Thank you, Roger. Yeah. Great to talk to you. Can we talk again soon? We can talk anytime you want. I'm Thank happy you, to Roger see you. Thank you, Roger Epstein, <laughs> tax lawyer and co-founder of Asia Pacific Group. Asia Pacific Group. And also... Galaxy Trade and Technology Limited. Ah, 
There's Which another show in that, Roger. I will tell you that on my next show. I will. Eventually, when, that, when that's going good, we'll uh -huh. have a good talk about it. Thanks that. so much. Thanks, Jay.